That's fine. Yeah, that's whatever. You're dead air. Uh huh. Take that. How's that make you feel? Yo, mama. Uh, oh my god. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> Really? That's right, I went there. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> wow, is this like the 1990s again? <laughs> Good times, the 90s. Good times. I mean, we're playing Star Trek, so time warps are inevitable in this game. So, I miss the 90s. Space. Mm -hmm. The final frontier. Oh, you don't miss the 90s, Ben? I do. I do. I miss that. It seemed like we were actually optimistically gaining places. Even worse. For, for those who are tuning in, by the way, this is one of the reasons. Well, the Enterprise's primary mission is Pete. Yeah. Time out. Where we uh, wait for them longer than this? Yep. Like I said, this game does have its rough spots. One of those being that every time you start the game, you have to go through the intro sequence in the very beginning of the first mission before you can load the game. For what? That's just again, it's a rough. Like that's a rough part. I suspect that time, budget constraints, etc., didn't allow them to actually have a proper menu. The sequel fixes that problem, fortunately. That is. I've never seen that before. In yeah, the, I'm not. I'm not. Well, maybe I'm criticizing a little. Well, not in the way that I'm disparaging uh, developers. I know how service things can come down on you like that. Six, yeah. Twenty years. Ago. I just. It's, I've never seen that before. Like ever. Yeah. Huh. The ensign actually has experience with the acolytes. The acolytes did a lot of good work. For what did he say? His uncle was one. Yep. I had an uncle who joined Scientology. Help them for a change. I did, but that's the equivalent of what he's saying, basically. <laughs> yep. But anyway. We're still on a timer, unfortunately. We've saved one person who needs saving, but there's another one, if you'll recall, yeah. back at the last episode, who got hot trapped in a cave-in. And now that we've dealt with these fake Klingons... So he's in there, right? Yep, Kirk. The answer to this mystery lies ahead of us, gentlemen. All right, sir. Well, uh, Moving forward. Have a, have a look inside, and let's see... Oh, that... Uh, if that's where the caveman is, he's dead. <laughs> a gateway to an alien race. The wonders of the galaxy are endless, aren't they, Mr. Spock? Indeed, Captain. They can also be damn cold. <laughs> it wouldn't be McCoy if he wasn't complaining about whatever Captain, is going on or not. Captain, there are several weak points in the cave-in's structure. Careful use of our phasers from the top down should be able to clear it. That, yeah, by but, the way, but if he's in there, he's dead, right? Yeah, possibly. Let's find out for certain, though. I'm picking up weak vital signs. If we don't dig him out soon, we're going to lose him. All right, just don't shoot him, is what I'm saying. Yeah, well, you know, don't be trigger happy. Now, last time you mentioned red shirt death. Yes. That's interesting. It's interesting that you should have mentioned that because that is a thing in this game. Obviously, it's Star Trek, the original series, red shirts, or it's already here, blah, blah. What happens is that at certain points, you can screw up, and the red shirt will take the hit for you. You could almost consider him to be your life bar, in a way. <laughs> now, if you're blatantly stupid in certain areas, then you can base it... As How little his life is valued. Yeah. He's, he's, and your, this, he's your extra guy. And this is one of them. Spock just gave us the hint to avoid that situation. But I'll just go ahead and save the game. Save new game. Replace... Shut up. And I'll go ahead and show you what happens if you decide to ignore Mr. Spock's advice and shoot from the top down. Wait, Ben, you don't tell Uhura to shut up. Captain, you let Uhura talk. Well, first, Mr. Spock says, Captain, the structure is extremely unstable. I would not recommend and disturb the lower section before the upper earth structures have been cleared. Well, in that case, there is something here. Here, can you spot what might happen if I shoot the wrong place, Kenton? Well, I think it would be more fun if we shot the bottom so all the rocks came tumbling down. They're not going to allow it to, uh, because that would just kill us all. So where else would we shoot? Uh, that Probably the boulder that sticks out, obviously. That's a good point. Let's not shoot that. Assume firing positions. It'd be a bad place to fire. <laughs> no, that's actually the correct place. Because... Bella! <laughs> <laughs> Nice Hold it. He's dead, Jim. <laughs> you knew it was coming. It's a Star Trek game. Like I said, they have everything. But it no. wouldn't be Star Trek if, if, if Red Shirts didn't die and McCoy didn't come over and say he's dead, Jim. Yep. But no. Assume firing. If you want to avoid that, obviously, you get rid of the boulder first. Yep. And then just one after another. I don't know, it would have been a more proper Star Trek episode if we let the man die. 
I mean, if you want me to restore and do that, we can no, totally no, do no, that. We'll let him live for now. All right. But uh, he better he better watch himself. Yep. This man is badly hurt and suffering from shock and exposure as well. Oh boy, exposure. Wait. No. <laughs> I know that's the medical term for it, but it's kind of fun in that he was buried and yet suffering from exposure. Yeah, well, I mean, if it, there's just rocks, it's not like they contain heat well. But I'm surprised he's thing, not dead. But he'll live. Yes! Saved. What do you do? He was just here exploring and mining, and they found this door, and then, yeah, the cave in. Oh, thank you, kind souls, for saving my life. Let me rest here for a little before returning to report this miracle to Prelate and Given. Now, let's go ahead and go on back right now. Is the guy going to come with you or is he just automatically going to show up? He's automatically, go he's automatically going to leave, uh, but we want to come back here anyway because now the ticking time clock for this mission is done. We we've now dealt with all the things that were toxic. Yeah, we've now dealt with, we've now saved Save the people who were previous. potentially going to die. So now we actually have time to explore and investigate a little bit. And, and more importantly, to talk to some of these people well, and get more information. Obviously, we talked to the Tellerite last time, but let's talk with the other people. Ah! The uh, good doctor's not here anymore. That's you know, odd. Jim. They can take a captain out of a starship and a science officer out of his lab, but you can never retire a doctor. <laughs> Not the good ones, that's for sure. My mom wanted me to become a doctor. <laughs> Honest. But I hated my biology classes. That's so lame. <laughs> So did I, but I became one anyway. Oh! <laughs> no character. That is not logical, Doctor. <laughs> Neither were some of my professors. <laughs> the medical methods... The banter is golden. Oh, the banter between doctor. McCoy, Kirk, and Spock is amazing. I just even mean, like, some of the Even some of the ensigns and stuff like that are I just really mean good. that the ensign is the classic eager young Starfleet officer well, of course, with he's no an alternative what? character whatsoever. Uh, our yeah. Standards, yes. Here, the acolytes prefer a simpler lifestyle. Unfortunately, this is one of the consequences. Yep. I know he wouldn't be disposable, but if we're gonna bring an ensign, it should be Chekhov. Yeah, well. Chekhov, that's good. was, is my partner. I was on the communications oh. link when partner the or the rock partner. and silenced him. Unknown. He said he found a strange door with devilish writing. True. He came upon the gate of hell itself. <laughs> or, and I'm just spitballing here, it was just a door. I headed up the party. Stop talking crazy, Ken. It had to have been the gates of hell. It had to have been. Oh, no, you're right. What was I thinking? <laughs> Can you tell us what they look like? Like the demons that have plagued devout folks since before our people left the earth. Huge. Okay, we've yeah, yeah, talked we heard, to you. We heard this a little more. Yep. We talked to you. So, time to go explore the... So, time to go talk to the guy proper and explore his lab a little bit. bit oh, is than, that where he went? Yep. He went over to his lab over here. So, also a little bit of a. Well, what happens next? I don't know, Kirk. You tell us. This place looks real comfortable. Place to combine work, contemplation. Man's got an eye for the beauty of useful things and for the use of beautiful things. I think we could get along fine. <laughs> Interesting. I miss McCoy. Seriously, I we all do. I dreamed that Starfleet would be interested in my discoveries, Captain. But our God often surprises us. Hmm. This study represents a man with a keen mind, Captain. To judge by what I he also sees, there is little which does not Yeah, poor old Nemo. The equipment yeah. is I mean, it, it was this time. But I saw a documentary uh, by uh, Nimoy's son. Uh, I forget his first name. Yep. Uh, and it was basically like my dad. It's called like my dad's Spock. And it's basically yep. a uh, a rundown of what it was like uh, being, of uh, what yep. Nimoy's career was like, and what it was like being raised by him in their home life and so forth yeah. and such. Which it was a process of uh, becoming an actor back in those days. Yeah, I can only imagine. I myself have uh, some limited theater background. I had college and school as such. I tried to minor in theater, but unfortunately, I was one class shy of getting it. So, oh, would you would you have wanted to go into acting? Into acting itself proper? No, but I would have would not have minded getting a minor and then having it as sort of just something fun to do. Eh, you know? Fair enough. I mean, oh. you still could if you wanted. Nothing's stopping you. I know nothing's really stopping me right now except what's life. the local theater theme like, man? Why don't we uh, why don't we look that up? <laughs> <laughs> 
let's see, let's see if we can get you let's into, see, let's into some. <laughs> let's do that some other time. I was going to say that actually this is the point where you can start, where you might start realizing that since you're Kirk and you have crew with you, you can actually use crew here, here to do things. Things and interact with things that you see around here. You can see the red border around my icon and such indicating things to interact with. Uh, if they can't interact with it, they'll at least make a comment or something. He looks at you with a puzzled expression. He's a security officer, so why the hell would he mess with anything scientific? But Spock, on the other hand... I failed to see the luck. Well, okay, well... Yeah, Spock's, Spock's like, I don't want any part of that either. Yeah. The but, hand is like, that's like a, for picking stuff up, right? Yeah, it is. A multi-purpose workspace to find well-worn tools and equipment close at hand. Hmm. It doesn't really look like a grabbing hand. It looks like like yep. a, like a paint hand. A vintage eighty twelve eighty six of the mid twenty first century. <laughs> it is a fine museum piece. Yeah, and it looks like a museum piece from our perspective it, yeah, too. Interestingly enough, I, I would immediately put that thing in an attic if it was in my house. Yeah. Well, I guess you could display it. I don't know. LGR sometimes like displays. What's running on there, Mr. Spock? It Captain, this appears to be a model of the Earth. Notice how it models a proper situation for a total eclipse. That is actually a clue, but we'll come back to that. Are we going to go go back to the cave now and uh, and deal with these so-called demons? In a bit. I never dream. First, though... I mean, there doesn't seem to be anything else interesting here. A glass display of mineral specimens, including a meteorite, a few fossil shells, the skull of a cat-sized alien animal, and a very encrusted twist of metal. Yep. Now we go back to the cave. Yep, that should have given what's his face enough time to get the hell out of our way so that we can actually deal with the case, deal with the mystery door. Is there actually a time on that, or will he just be gone the instant you go back? He'll just be gone the instant we go back. I was mostly just messing around a little bit just to look. I really around. like the design of the uh, of the outfits on those Klingons. I'm hoping uh, yep. the next season of Discovery uh, will have them wearing like their updated uniforms, like the unif like get I, what I'm saying is like the the 21st century version. Of what the classic Klingon uniforms will look like, you yeah, know, with modern being made now as opposed to what they look like in the sixties. Yep. This door is made of an unknown material. It is clearly built by an alien race we have no knowledge of. Interesting. What's that flashing thing? Nothing to report. Hmm. Uh, it looks like a flashing thing to me, Ben. Yep. This looks like some of the hand security panels on the Enterprise. Okay, so obviously you put the the Klingon hand on it. Yep. It appears to be a security lock designed to open the door when the correct handprint is registered. Verify. Now, you said Save new game. that it wouldn't be a proper Save Enterprise uh, his episode without a red shirt dying. We still have an a option proper original to do series episode. We still have an option to do that, although this time it's going to be a little bit more gruesome. Let's be dumb. <laughs> Make him do it? Mm hmm. Just watch. I think I was shocked, sir. Do it again. Do it again. That was definitely a mild shock. Keep doing it, Ensign. You will get through. Ouch, that hurt. Your voice annoys <laughs> me. Keep doing it until it doesn't. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> oh, no. He's dead, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> really? You <laughs> think? Really, Doc? <laughs> I'm familiar with the signs of, uh, <laughs> of death, Ben. I think uh, head removed from body is like the first one. But I think... Uh, <laughs> Disintegration really? should be much higher on that list. Yes, yes. All right, let's try this. Maybe the thing we all knew would work. Perfect, but something seems to be shorting out. God damn! Spock, fix it. Use a uh, tricorder. Fix it. Yep. I think about the tricorders. It does. Damn. Everything. It won't do. It won't do what? Yep. Pierce the broken it, it pierce the hand is broken. So the hand is broken. Yeah. We'll have to take it on back. I believe there's a way that you can get it uh, Spock to examine the hand and notice that it seems to be damaged, but he will basically tell you that he doesn't have the skill, the tools necessary to repair it where he's at. Indicating back to here. So there. what, that's like a glitch where he doesn't say anything or Yep. Or is it just like this version? Uh it's just I don't remember how exactly to do it, and this get and the game is unfortunately a little bit finicky with controls. Mm. But what a fascinating piece of equipment! Here we go. Highly advanced technology. 
You see here, it seems to have been damaged, however. Uh -huh. Take it to my workbench and let's see if it can be repaired. I fear my hands are too shaky to perform such fine work, but perhaps one of you can do it. Uh, obviously Spock. Yep. Uh, Spock, see what you can do about that hand. There we go. I mentioned that the tricorder was kind of a MacGuffin, but this Spock's genius is definitely one of the I bigger Deus Ex Machina in Star Trek. Seriously. When in doubt, just let Spock handle it. Yep. Let's continue. So much so that, you remember, there's an episode called Spock's Brain, where yes. his actual brain is used as a MacGuffin to keep, like, I think it was an alien civilization going <laughs> temporarily. So they yep. took his brain out of his body and used it as a computer, because apparently Vulcans are just that smart. Yeah, that was, like, that was a very weird episode. I like you look into it. Vulcans aren't actually like smarter than uh, other and species. They just, you know, their logic helps them opens. have much more clear, much more clear thinking. Yep. If you will. Scan down the corridor. See what we can see. Nothing to report. Good. Of course not. Well, I suppose we can go dive in there and have a much deeper look uh, next time on the greatest games ever made. All right. Bye, everyone. <laughs>